Hi everyone, welcome to our Tuesday evening devotion, or we like to call it TED. So please invite your family and friends to join us. You may click the share button or type your names on the comment section. And as we begin tonight, let me encourage you with this word. Well, actually, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's found in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. It says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen? Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord God, that once again, we're able to gather through this platform to worship you and to learn more about you. Father, as we commit our time in our Tuesday evening devotion, prepare our hearts and our mind to receive your word. And may we just give all that we are to praise and to worship you. So Father, let your presence be with us. We love you, Lord. This I ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So church, let's worship God.
My story ends with you Your glory lives in me I am alive in you I am alive in you My story ends with you Your glory lives in me I am alive in you I am alive in you My story ends with you Your glory lives in me I am alive in you I am alive in you My story ends with you Your glory lives in me I am You're the author of my life. Give you praise, O oh God, because you're the Savior of our souls. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, you're the author of my life. I will sing you praise. You're the Savior. So I will shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. You're the author of my life. I will sing you praise. Oh, you're the savior of my soul. You're the author. Yes, Lord, that is our faith declaration today that you alone is the author of our life. No one else, Lord, not our position, not the titles that we have, Lord, the people around us, Lord God. You alone is the one who is in control of our life. So, Father, we lift up everything to you. And tonight, as we continue to learn more about you, Father, speak to us. Reveal yourself to us, Lord God. And let your word minister to us. And we are just excited to experience your awesome and amazing ways in our life. So we lift up everything to you tonight. This I ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. The so church, good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is BJ. I'm one of the leaders here in Victory Gasson Avenue. So tonight we'll continue learning about the attributes of God. Last week, the symbol of Tony Robbie as we talk about God's holiness. And tonight, we will talk about God's sovereignty. So, when we say sovereign, what does it mean? What comes to your mind? If you are going to check the dictionary, ito pang nakuha ko, if it is used as an adjective, it is defined as possess of supreme power. Or if it is a noun, it is defined as one that exercises supreme authority within a limited sphere. So siguro from this definition, maybe some of us will automatically think of a particular people that fits this description. Tama po ba? Hindi po kayo nag-iisa. Ako rin po. Kailangan ko maintindihan. Ano ba yung sovereign? So, one example that I can cite here is like the monarchs, yung mga king and queen, or any person that is ruling over a nation. Ito naman po yung mga political leaders natin. But God's sovereignty is totally different. Yan po kailangan natin maintindihan. It is not bound by human limitations. 
It says in Psalms chapter 115, verse 3, Our God is in heaven. He can do whatever He wants. Grabe, no? So unlike man, God is always in control. God is sovereign. It could be in a small or big aspect of our lives. Eto, isipin natin ito ngayon. Kayo ba? As simple as the air that we breathe or even the radiation from the sun. Pagising nyo ba sa umaga or pagising ba natin sa umaga? Pinoproblema ba natin yun? Kasi ako? Hindi. Di ba? So, God controls everything so that these things will not harm us. We have the right amount of oxygen level in the atmosphere. To be exact, it should be 21% for us to live. Kasi kung mababa po doon, then we won't get enough oxygen that our body needs. And meanwhile, if it's too high, ano nangyari po, our lungs, will get, our lungs will get damaged from oxygen toxicity or poisoning. And as for the sun, diba? if there's too much radiation or yung UV rays na tinatawag natin, that will reach Earth, for sure, masusunog po tayo. We might not even have a planet to call home kung yan po ang mangyayari. Now, apart from these examples na binagit ko po, no, there are many other daily things we take for granted that God is holding together for us. It says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things. And in Him, all things hold together. Ang ganda po ng word ni, ni God. In, in Him, all things hold together. And that even includes yung mga challenges, problems, trials, and suffering that we face in our life. But sometimes, ano pa yung response natin? We question God, di ba? Or even doubt if God really sees us at that moment. May mga, may mga hinaing pa nga tayo eh, mga sinasabi natin, Lord, kailan? Kailan na? Or matutupad pa ba kaya yung pinagpipray ko? O siguro iba sa atin sila sabi, Lord, nakikita mo ba yung pinagdadaanan ko? Ang hirap. Lord, ayoko na. Tama na. Each one of us, it could be, or rather, each one of us has experienced that. But all of this, yung mga sinasabi natin na mga hinaing natin, we all tend to forget that God is still in control. He is sovereign no matter what the situation is. Now, let's take a look at the life of Joseph, the dreamer. He's the son of Jacob. When he was growing up, his brothers tried to kill him. But instead, his brothers ended up selling him to the Egyptians as slave. Grabe, no? Di ko imagine your own brothers did that to Joseph or did that to him. And while, at hindi lang yon, while serving as a slave and somewhat okay na, he, uh, Joseph is gaining the trust of the Egyptians, he was suddenly sent to jail because of Potiphar's wife accusing him of attempted rape. So, if you were Joseph, maisip mo ba na may pag-asa pa yung buhay mo? Grabing nangyari sa kanya, even his own family betrayed him. But, guess what? Ano po yung ending ng story ni Joseph? He actually became the second most powerful man in Egypt and ended up reconciling and reuniting with his family. So from the start, namuntik na siyang parayin ng mga brother niya, eto na yung ending. Naging happy ending pa. Paano nangyari yun? Uh, for sake time, we might, we might not be able to 
talk about it. But if, uh, if you want to check more about the details of the life of Joseph, you can read Genesis starting chapters 37 to 50. But basically, po, ito po yung nangyari. Joseph trusted and obeyed God. Joseph knew that God was sovereign despite the difficulties that he faced. Sabi nga niya when he got reunited with his family in Genesis 50 verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Wow. Hindi natin alam, or Joseph doesn't knew. He did not knew what will happen to his life, but he was just confident in God's sovereignty in his life. And Joseph responds, and this was Joseph's response in knowing God's sovereignty. Now, Tayo, let's talk about the responses that we should have knowing the reality of God's sovereignty. The first thing is we have to is trust. This is a response of yielding our life to God's control. Ito yung, yung situation mo. Yes, it may not look good for you right now, but you still look forward every day. Alam mo, God is with you. Or God is with us. Narinig natin, di ba? He got your back, bro. He got, he has our back. And second is peace. Peace which is resting in the knowledge of His sovereignty, especially for those uh, who are experiencing anxiety right now. Though everything seems uncertain, we can rest and be still for God is holding things together for our good. Tulad nung nabasa natin kanina sa Colossians. Third is obedience. This response is obeying God. Knowing na yung actions natin, it has uh, real consequences. Ito yung response to Joseph when he ran away from Potiphar's wife's temptation. He knew God was a supreme authority, so he obeyed by running away. He doesn't want to commit sin. And lastly, is worship, where we stand in awe of God's greatness. This is when we really get to understand and internalize natin that the reality of God's sovereignty. Yung, yung mapapataas ka ng kamay, yung mapapa-worship ka kay Lord, or mapapa-iyak ka. I believe each one of us has a story to tell about this. Yung experience natin to. That we can't contain it to ourselves because it's just too good to be true. But my brothers and sisters, it is uh, true. So church, ano gagawin natin? Ano ang response natin to knowing and believing that God is sovereign? I don't know what season you are in in your life right now. Maybe some of us have challenges na hindi maintindihan. Maybe some of us don't know how to face this kind of trials. Or some may not even be seeing God in the picture sa sobrang hirap na pinagdadaanan nila. But still, let us respond with trust, peace, obedience, and worship. Why? Because God is sovereign. And according to this verse, Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. We are living our life in accordance the purpose that God for each one of us. Aren't you glad that we have a God like that? Aren't you glad that we have a God that is 
always with us. And I hope and pray that knowing this kind of responses, it will enable us to just elevate our faith, no matter what situation we are in right now, to just really focus our eyes on God alone. So church, let me pray for everyone who's watching here tonight. Father, thank you for this time of worship. Thank you that we're able to know more about you. To know more about your sovereignty. Father, each one of us, we have our own struggles, we have our own challenges that we face. But Father, give us the grace to continuously remind us of your sovereignty. That we will not just look on our circumstances nor to the authorities in this world, but we will focus our eyes on you alone. Lord, we are also praying for our brothers and sisters who are discouraged and feeling hopeless right now because the sobrang bigat na pinagdadaanan nila. That they may think na it's the end of the road for them. But Lord, I pray, help them to be able to respond with trust, peace, obedience, and worship to you. Father, I pray that let your presence be with them, that they may feel it right now in the name of Jesus. I declare, Lord God, I rebuke all the lies of the enemy that is in their minds right now, that they're that telling them that dito lang sila, hanggang dito na lang sila. Lord, I pray, let your sovereignty take over, Lord God, for them to experience and feel that you are in their midst, that you are the one in control in their life. Father, as your sons and daughters, as we respond to your sovereignty, help us that we will be able to glorify you to those people around us, that as they see us, they will witness, Lord, how big you are in our life. The through, the through it, Lord God, they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So Father, I pray to each one of us, use us mightily that we will be able to be bold in declaring how big you are in our life, Father. Lord, we commit everything to you. We surrender everything to you, Lord God. Maraming maraming salamat po. We just can't contain, Lord God. Words are not enough to express how grateful we are. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. So now, church, when we apply you know, one of the response that we just talked about tonight, that is worship. So I encourage everyone, let's all continue to worship God. You're the author of my life I will sing your praise You're the savior of my soul I will shout your name Jesus, Jesus You're the author of my life I will sing your praise Oh, You're the savior Shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. You're the author of my life, and I will sing you praise. You're the savior of my soul. I will shout your name, Jesus, Jesus. You're the author of my life. I will sing you praise. Jesus, 
we cry out Oh Jesus, we thirst before you with you, your glory lives in me, I am alive in you, I am alive in you, my story ends with you, your glory lives in me, I am alive in you, I am alive in you, my story ends with you, your glory lives in me. Church, I hope and I pray that you were encouraged and blessed by the Word of God. So as we end, receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, we are looking forward to seeing you next Tuesday. God bless you.